everybody. So today we're going to talk a little bit about, be quiet. We're going to talk a, a little bit about uh, inflation and what is it doing with interest rates? Uh, is it affecting the real estate market? Is the real estate market starting to, you know, going a downward trend? We're starting to see, uh, well, issues and, and whatnot based on, uh, you know, what the media is reporting and some of the numbers that have been coming out. And then we'll go through some of those. Uh, I was just kidding around <laughs> with some of the team members here. Uh, we do have a good time. Nonetheless, we do have a great time. So, uh, hey, uh, subscribe. <laughs> Make sure you hit the like button. Ask questions. We're going to go over some financing questions. Uh, we've had a ton of these questions coming up today. Uh, or not today, but at least over the last two weeks. So we want to make sure that we're going through and, and explaining so you can go into it, whoop, eyes wide open, and uh, understand what you're looking for and some of the, uh, let's say, traps that you could be pulled into. And, and uh, hey, you know what? That's what this is all about. This is about learning. There's no strings attached. Hey, make sure you share this. Uh, it's free. Share this with somebody that uh, you know is looking at wanting to buy or sell because it gives them the best information possible. So I'll be meeting with Dan and Kathy later. And uh, as we're uh, bombing around looking at a few things and whatnot, absolutely fabulous couple, fabulous. Anyway, uh, so if uh, you guys have questions, post it. We get back to about, uh, it takes about 30 minutes for us to, uh, to respond, except for on Sundays. Sundays, well, we wait till Monday. All right. Memorial Day. This is Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we are always very thankful, very humbled uh, at the sacrifices of our fathers, grandfathers, our forefathers uh, to provide us the freedoms in which we enjoy today. And uh, for some of the political entities that are trying to take away those freedoms, uh, do not stand idly by. Uh, make sure you use your voice. That is one of the greatest things about this country. So with that, have a absolutely fabulous Memorial Day to all of those uh, and their sacrifices. We thank you. All right. So let's take a let's take a yeah, let's take a look at things here. Got a comedy crew behind me here. All right. Uh, they're making fun of this uh, because it looks like a two-year-old wrote it. <laughs> well I wrote it. I guess I'm 53. So a 53-year-old wrote it. <laughs> All right. So, okay, so it wasn't my best writing day. All right, here we go. For sale. So month over month, we're actually up 36.7%, which is actually good because, again, we have really just kind of gone into our, our spring market and, and we're like that little Ferrari <laughs> versus, uh, you know, normally. Okay, so normally about mid-May, uh, until after July 4th weekend, it is a real estate ghost town. It really slows down. Why? Vacations happen. Uh, kids are getting out of school. Uh, you know, people are gearing up for a change in calendar and whatnot. And regardless if you have children that are in school or not, or you don't have children, it doesn't matter. It just, it is a normal cycle. Picks up after the July 4th weekend. And then about mm, mid, mid to late August, it slows down. Uh, most of the time through September. Why? Last minute vacations, kids getting back into school, you know, things starting to transition. And then, boop, in October, it kicks back up again. And then, you know, it starts to taper off uh, about mid December. Okay. Well, that's a normal cycle for us. Okay. Well, the last year, that, that didn't happen uh, because everybody was still at home. And technically, even though we, technically, we can say, hey, uh, we can go out and enjoy more. We are still seeing people staying more at home, but uh, being safe, which is good. And you know what? Really securing that next home and, and uh, dialing things in, which means you're also at home looking at a lot of things, mortgage rates being one, which we will head into in a little bit. All right. So new on market. Oh, what a bummer. This number came down. Uh, it's still up month over month at 11.2%, but it's down what we have seen the past couple of weeks, which is a real, well, it's a real bummer, uh, especially for the buyers. Why? Because Penn did month over up, uh, month over month, they're up 20.4% with sales up 12.4%. Month over month, 
which is still really good. You might be saying, oh, yeah, George, but we're coming out of, you know, the, the, the kind of the winter months. And, of course, everybody's, you know, the flowers are out, leaves are blossoming, people are out, and, boop, you know, we start doing more. Well, yes, however, we really never saw that much of a slowdown during the, you know, the late December, uh, uh, January, February. There wasn't too much slowing in gown. It kept pretty much going. We were still making more sales uh, month over month, each consecutive month, uh, even up till today. And we're going to go over that in just a minute. So year over year, our inventory, well, it's still basically about half, right? We're at 458 and new on market is up 16.5% year over year. So you might remember we said, hey, uh, as May starts to roll around and, and concludes heads into June, we're going to start to see kind of our numbers start to shift a little bit because 2020 over 2019, that was a big deal. I mean, that was a really big deal. Why? Because historically, let me show you, and Marie will post this, Historically, right, the light green is what is active and dark green is sold. We historically have all, whoop, there we go, we always see a more inventory than homes are sold. But look at here. Here's, you know, our May and our June, July, and you can see the dark green started to be the dominant sales feature all the way through, which means that our inventory kept dropping down, but we are still selling more homes. So we're selling more of what is out there and why sellers are absolutely capitalizing on this market and, and some of our crazy offers that we see that have no logic behind them. Okay, so whatever. All right, so when we take a look at that and we look at the number of homes uh, month over or year over year being up 16.5, we are still 25.7 percent above on pended, but hang on a second, I'm going to go into that a little bit. Look, sales are up 30.3 percent. Okay, now, this is what's really important. Sales are always in our rear view mirror because just because we have a sale, that doesn't mean, oh, they just, they, you know, they, they closed. Okay, yeah, but they closed, but they were, they were, they had a pending contract. They went under contract over a month ago or about a month ago. So this really are the end of April, first part of May closing. So we're always looking in the rearview mirror. And you can already see we are year over year, our numbers keep climbing. This is a more dynamic number along with you know active and, and new on market. But this tells us what's happening in real time. What is our trend? What's going on in real time? And we can see that we are putting more homes under contract. Now granted, Appended sale means that we still have a buyer and a seller that need to clear some contingencies, whether it's an inspection, 1017, financing, whatever it might be, before they say, oh, here we go, yep, we can close. Whether a cash sale or, or finance, whatever it is, it hasn't hit that right there. Now, what's important? When we look at this number here, okay, that means next month when these, when these closings from being going under contract to pended to close, which again takes 30 days, next month at this time, we're going to see the, the fallout of all of these additional sales with limited inventory coming back on market. And that is the key thing that, that sell, or buyers are struggling with right now. As we're looking at drawing down, we've been continuing to draw down that inventory to where we're, you know, we're sub two weeks, a healthy market, okay? A healthy market. Just to make sure for all the new people watching this, all right? If we have a bucket, and we call this bucket the Northwest MLS, and all the agents, all the real estate agents put their listings in this bucket, and then we put a lid on it. If we had nothing more, once that lid goes on, we have nothing more, we should have four to six months of inventory in this bucket to sell. That is considered a balanced market. Okay, we're at two weeks. We are sub two weeks, and in certain markets, we're about a week in certain areas because there's just not enough homes out on market for, for buyers to, to buy. And that's why we are seeing the, the crazy, crazy offers that we are seeing sometimes. Well, like last week, you know, Sonar was here, and she, she was awesome. 
she used her green bean. You know, hey, you know, I've got five cans of green beans in uh, in my grocery store, and I have 500 buyers, right? Okay. Well, if the can of green beans is normally 99 cents, the first person comes in and says, "Hey, I'm going to give you two bucks." And the next person says, "Wait, wait, wait, wait! I'm, I'm not going to give you two. I'm going to give you four dollars, right?" And and then she used the analogy that it was going up. Yeah, I'm going to give you ten dollars for that can of green beans for my turkey dinner, my turkey or my uh, green bean casserole. Yuck. Anyway, <laughs> hey, all right. So so you've got the demand because there's such a limited inventory. All right, the flash of green bean casserole. Mm. All right, you might as well have your liver. All right, I don't like that one either. Okay, but let's uh, let's take this over. So let's look at the same month of May because we're at May 28th here. May 29th. May 29th. Hey, it's my brother's birthday. Oh, I did wish him happy birthday. Happy birthday, anyways. <laughs> to my brother. All right. Uh, okay. So 2020 over 2021 or 21 2021 over 2020. All right. So inventory is down 45.8%. But look at this. Uh, new on market for the same month. Okay, only May. May 1 to May 28th, technical, right? Because today's the 29th. All right. Inventory, new on market is up almost 30%. Let's just call it 30%. Look at this, though. Tended might be year over year for the same month, right? So we come over here and we start looking at our numbers here, we can already see that the dark green is outperforming the light green, which is never, consistently this has never happened in my 27 plus years in uh, practicing real estate, ever, okay? This is such an anomalous experience. It is an, ama it is an amazing experience, let's put it that way. All right, so we come down here. So tended sales are up 34.5. Holy smokes, but look at this. We're almost 60%. We have 60% more sales at the for the same month, for the same number of days I, in May, year over year. And last year was pretty amazing. And we are, we are crushing it by almost 60% with half the inventory still. Okay, so our inventory keeps dropping. Our sales keep going up. It is a wild, wild experience. So most of you, most of you are saying, okay, okay, that's great. Oh, what does that mean? Can you make this simpler for me? And the answer is yes. Let's make this a little bit easier. Okay, so in the last seven days, okay, the last seven days we had 1,209 homes come on market, yeah, a little bit less than what we've seen uh, the last couple of weeks. Part of that, part of that vacation, school stuff, things like that, get out, go enjoy life. Uh, I'm, I'm not ready yet. I'm, I'm, there's nothing for me to buy is one of the biggest things that we hear. Uh, so 1,209 came on market. We had 2,280 that went off market. That's almost double. Plus, we closed 1,773. So we still closed more than what came on market. Plus, we already dumped almost twice the inventory off the market that was on in an already depleted market, right? Okay. So I gotta ask, because we do we gotta do a shout out. Sinar, Sinar, <laughs> Sinar last last week said, you know, to the sellers, wake up. <laughs> that cracks me up. Uh, I do have a fabulous team. <laughs> we do have a really good time. All right, so let's talk about this. When what she's talking about is wake up. We had 385 uh, listings either canceled, reduced, or expired. What? What? <laughs> Real numbers, last seven days, right? 281 prices reduced. What? 24 homes expired. <laughs> what? And we had 80 canceled. Again, what? How? How can any seller in today's market not get their home sold when there is a massive shortage of inventory? That's easy. Uh, you have way too much sentimental equity in, in your in your price, and there's zero value, zero value for sentimental equity. Okay, uh, you might think that buyers are I don't know maybe less educated, uh, 
maybe not less educated, maybe that they're willing to just give you dollars just to give you dollars just because you think your home is worth so much more. Uh, a unclear expectation maybe by an agent. Uh, there's a number of reasons why, and I am sorry, and that's sad to all of those. Look, buyers are incredibly smart, incredibly smart. And if your home is going through a price reduction, if your home expired, if you cancel because you're not getting your home uh, you know, sold, uh, shame on you, shame on your agent. Uh, because very, very clearly, very clear, if this is not clear, homes are selling incredibly well. And if, you're not, if your home's not selling, it is overpriced. That's all there is to it. Homes that have challenges, homes that back up to high tension power lines, might be, uh, you know, they have more road noise. Uh, maybe it's just in utter disrepair. Maybe, maybe you've got a cliffhanger of a lot. Uh, who knows, right? Those homes are also selling. They are selling. Where historically they've had challenges selling, they are selling. I'll get off my soapbox. Sellers, wake up. Buyers are not just going to give you a price just because that's what you want. You have to be smart, okay? Because they are. I guarantee you, they are smart. And in fact, that's going to lead into our next subject when we talk about financing. I had a great conversation with, with Dan. I didn't get a chance to talk to Juliana, but I had a great conversation with Dan Golden at uh, Cornerstone Lending. And uh, because he's also helping out, a, you know, three of the referrals that, that we're, uh, that we're uh, chatting with. Uh, so we're excited to meet with Jazzy and, and, uh, and a few of the other folks. And it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Uh, and one of the things that we looked at and one of the things that we talked about is how long will you be in the home? Okay. And if you're going to be in the home for less than 10 years, you should look at seven and one arms. Uh, meaning it's a fixed rate for seven years and it adjusts after that. And yeah, there are maximum caps to that. And you might say, well, why? So we, we, we went ahead and wrote some down. So 30 year fixed, no points is at 3%. That's par pricing today is 3%, right? But if you do it as a, a seven and one arm with no points, uh, the rate is 2.125. That's already a massive savings, massive, right? Especially if, you're looking at your loan balances of, you know, five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. If you did a, if you do three quarters of a point, you can actually get it down to one point seven five. That's amazing. So if you know that you're not going to be in that home for the next thirty years, let's say you know you're going to be there for seven to ten years, maybe you're going to relocate, maybe hey, I'm going to move up to my next home or or whatnot. Hey, this makes absolute sense. Absolute perfect sense, right? A 10 one arm, no points, two and a half percent. You're good for 10 years. You're actually good for 12 years if you think about it, because you have a maximum cap every month and every year that that, that rate can adjust. So even if it hits its maximums each each month, you're still tens of thousands of dollars ahead because you're not using 30 year money. And if you need to have a deeper conversation about that, either Dan or myself, just let us know. All right, no strings attached, we'll just walk you through it. All right, non-owner occupied. Hey, we, we warned you guys uh, when, when the, the, the lending guidelines changed to, a, uh, to uh, that the maximum percent could be, I'm forgetting now, it's like, I don't know, 7% or something like that, 6% or 5%, the maximum non-owner occupied or second home, uh, you know, loans in a portfolio, uh, they capped we knew we were going to see a bump in rates, and we did. Okay, so normally it was about three eighths of a point. Well, now we're a full point. Okay, but still four percent, still cheap money, still cheap money. But you put you put one point. That's one percent. One point equals one percent. Okay, uh, and so that you just take that times that by your loan balance. Okay, and that will tell you the cost. Many times that'll get you down to three point six two five. Hey. Uh, that that's money well spent right there, especially if you're going to keep this property for, you know, 10, 15 years, depending on what it is, right? Okay, so let's take a look at one of the biggest questions that come up. And, you know, people will say, you know, George, you know, you're always hammering on this, you know, get the, uh, get the, 
when you get a rate from a, a lender that you should get it on the same day and at the same time. Yes, you should, because rates are going up and down all the time. So I pulled one of them off. Uh, Marie will go ahead and put this on the video, but here you go. Here is a classic. That is a ticker. There you go, there's your ticker, right? And you can see, like stocks, there we go, it goes up and down. It goes up and down, just like the stock market, because it's tied to the stock market. Uh, this one, it says, note the uh, red, red large candles, right? You can see the colors there, okay? These are my notes here. Uh, on the right side of the chart is showing the price decline and rate increase. So remember, as these rates start performing better, okay, as we get a greater value in the uh, mortgage-backed securities, uh, the, the bonds and the 10-year treasury, the better that those are performing, the lower the interest rates. When they start to have an issue, when they start to fall and uh, they, you know, people start pulling out of them and they don't perform as well, okay, mortgage rates go up. As this comes down, rates go up. As this goes up, rates come down. Okay, that's an expectation. Understand it. So when we talk about that and people, as I said, you're all home and you're looking all the time and people are looking at rates and, and, and everything else. And it's like, okay, let's go through this because uh, there's a few clients that uh, almost got caught, almost got caught uh, and almost made a change until we were able to get all of the information because I'm going to show you something, and then I'm going to show you the details that come behind it. So we're going to talk about the five key things to look for when you're financing, okay? We take a look at this one. So remember, Dan, Dan today, our pricing is 3%, okay? I pulled this today based on some uh, emails that I received. Okay, look at that. So we have 30 year fixed at 2.75. And you might go, dude, oh my gosh. Did you see that? He's outperforming Dan. He's at 2.75%. That's quarter rate. That's real money. And I'm like, yeah. But can you give me the rest of it? He's like, well, what are you talking about? Here we go. Remember, Dan's quoting you par pricing, 20% down. And uh, I think he does a, a mid score of like 700. Okay, something that is not one of the higher ranks to give you know more of a a consistent, unlike this one here, right? Because this one here, look at this, and I highlighted it because most people all they look at they look at this and they go, oh my god, I got to make a phone call. In fact, they got one that's even better. Let's see. Look at this. Maximum loan amount is 500 thousand. Oh wait a second. You're getting a $700,000 loan. Does this apply? Nay, nay. <laughs> that rate changes. Okay. So it's at $500,000. Owner occupied, oh, look at that, 75% LTV. When you put 25% down versus 20% down, you get a better rate. Huh. And over here, you can see that, oh, look at that. We have a minimum 760 uh, credit score. Plus, there's a buy down, there's a point. Small, it's like six hundred dollars, but uh, hey, well that that's well that's inconsistent with what the other uh, what Dan provided earlier, right? So the one below it says, uh, hey, uh, yeah, we'll do an FHA loan, okay? Uh, and, and in fact, uh, the max loan is three hundred and fifty-six thousand dollars. Okay, well you can go up to seven hundred and seventy-two dollars seven. 772,000, right? Why are they looking at this? Why are the numbers so low? Because the lower the, 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 lower the risk, the better, the better the rate they can offer because it's a lower risk. Because rates are based on risk, credit score, how much you're putting down, how much is your loan balance, right? What's your debt to income, your DTI, debt to income ratios, all of this comes into play. But they don't tell you here, all you see is this really great rate? And then people will say, uh, hey, Dan, 
I need to do the math that right. And he's like, wait a second, they're not even talking the same thing. But hang on a second. This is what's really awesome, because now we're going to add to it before we get into the five. Uh, I thought this one was awesome. Now, because it is the case and point of the time and day, because now we're going to add another element to it. So look at this. First, this is King County only. Not Snohomish County, not Pierce County, King County only, because they're quoting different pricing. Okay, well, look at this. They're saying for a 10-year fix, they're at 3.125 for a 30-year fix. I mean, not 10-year, 30-year fix. But look at this. We have, a, we have a fee to get there. Okay. All right. Well, that fee on 500000 is about $680. Okay. This one down here, 7-1 conforming, 2.25 uh, at 0.375. Okay. Well, that's about 1800 and change. All right. And what we're looking at here is that most people do not understand what this means. They look at this and they think, oh my gosh, that is awesome. Uh, and it is not the fact because there are other things that come into play. As an example, this in yellow, I will have Marie do this, so I'm not going to hold it up for you. It says, rates shown are for purchase loans only. Oh my gosh, wait a second. So that's not even a refinance. That is new money. Ha. Huh. This information is accurate as of May 28, 2021 at 9.03.24 a.m. Central Time. It's only good for that time. And is subject to change without notice. Typical disclaimer. If date and time were not important, that would not exist there. So understand, there's a lot of disclosures that when you guys are out looking at rates is a big deal, okay? Uh, compare apples to apples. I'm gonna help you out here. Five things you need to look at. Compare rates at the same time and day. I cannot stress that enough. Same time, same day, compare the rates, right? Then ask for that rate, is there a discount point, okay? What does it cost for me to get that loan? If they say, Oh, hey, uh, let's go back to dance. Oh, hey, Dan, uh, I'm looking at seven and one arms. Uh, what are you offering me? And Dan says, hey, I'll get you a seven and one arm for 1.75%. And you go, wow, that's awesome. You need to ask, hey, Dan, what is my cost? How many points? And he's going to say, hey, that's a good question. That's 0.75. And you say, okay, what is that based on a credit score? Let's come back here to the magic whiteboard. All right, so we talked about discount points, right? Oh, hey, I even wrote it down, 500,000 loans, 3.75 uh, points, and that was the cost, right? One point equals 1%. So we've asked, what is the rate, same time of day? What are my points, right? What is the loan to value that that rate is based on? Because if you're looking at doing a, a uh, conventional 5% uh, down, the rate he just quoted you, doesn't matter, okay? It's based on all of these factors that you need to ask to get the real answer, okay? As we saw in one of them, hey, that was that was a minimum 25% down, minimum, okay? Well, if you're looking at 10, 5, 20% down, hey, that rate went up. That, that rate does not work for you, okay? That is called marketing, and that's why they get you to call because then once they have you hooked, uh, you're kind of stuck at that point, right? Because you're running out of time. All right. So loan to value. Your loan to value changes depending on how much money you're putting down. Okay. Your rate is directly proportional to these numbers because this is risk. The more money you put in, less risk, better rate. Okay. The higher the higher the 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 loan to value, the higher the rate. Okay. The loan types, conventional, VA, FHA, USDA, each one of them uh, are, are different. Uh, historically, it is historically cheaper to do conventional. There are other options, especially if you're putting less than 20% down, that are advantageous. However, these allow a greater latitude with financing and with borrowers and credit flexibility and debt-to-income ratio flexibility. And that's what makes these so inviting. 
This one, more geographical, USDA. Okay, then we come down to credit score, okay? A credit score of 720 is still a great credit score, but you're gonna have a higher rate than somebody that hits that, that point at 760 where the credit score is lower. Many of our clients, when they say, hey, George, you know, yeah, we're looking at making a move in the next, uh, say, six, uh, six to eight months. I'm like, fabulous, go get your pre-approval. And they're like, what? Why? That's way too early. I'm like, no, it's not. Hey, man, go, go get your, go get, uh, have, have your, your reports pulled, get pre-approved, and here's why. If there's any small thing you can do to take you over that next, that next credit threshold, credit score threshold to get you a better price, meaning a better rate, and only if you're interested in saving money, you should do this now. We have found that to go many times from 720 to 760 could be the matter of paying down a, a credit card, uh, so you know, to a different you know uh, balance level. It might be removing a credit line. Okay, it might be adding a credit line. Super simple things, but it gives you that time to make that adjustment because the difference between these rates uh, or those credit scores could be an eighth, could be a quarter of a point. It's a big deal. Why? If it wasn't a big deal. This guy wouldn't have put it in writing, right? Okay. So, credit score, absolutely imperative. No, depending on loan type, when you're asking and looking at what they're publishing rates, make sure you know what the loan type is. Loan to value, what are they basing the loan to value, that rate based on the loan to value? Hey, I'm going to give you 2.5%. Okay, what loan to value is that? Oh, well, that's a 70% loan to value uh, with a uh, balance of only 500000 Okay, well, if that doesn't fit you, you know that the rate is going to be higher, okay? All right, uh, what are the points? And then, of course, make sure the same time and day. It is that critical. Those are the five key things you need to be in, uh, keep in mind. I know it was long, but it was fun. And hopefully you learned something. So remember, hey, guys, share the link. Hit the like button. Let us know what you think. Ask questions. We've received tons and tons of questions we've been answering, and we bring the ones we see most often into these videos. But if there's one thing you're like, George, I really want to get this answer, let me know, and we'll talk about it. We'll, we'll get you, and it might even do you just a personal video and give you that information. Anyway, subscribe. You guys have an absolutely fabulous Memorial Day weekend. It's a beautiful day out there, and I will see you guys on the next video. Take care.